What up, YouTube world? So, we're all locked down, we're all hunkered down. Figure what better time to make a video. Um, you know, but but on a serious note, this is some serious times we're living in. And um, I really feel like I have something to add to the, the conversation that's going around in the body of Christ and even to the people in the world about uh, uh, where we're at right now. You know, uh, I feel like something that is becoming more and more clear is uh, a lot of people are hearing and uh, God is showing them very similar things. There, there's a consensus throughout the body of Christ. And so I felt like that that's an important thing that maybe more people need to start bringing together the different voices within the body to get a clear picture on what path we're on right now and where we're going in this crazy season that we're in. So I could go and talk about all sorts of stuff, but I'm not going to cover everything in this video. I'm just going to cover certain topics. Um, there's a there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of things out there that that uh, um, that people are posting on and and uh, you know uh, about you know the nature of what's really happening with this whole you know pandemic and all these different things. But I'm just going to hit on some stuff that I really felt like was from God and. Um, um, I just wanted to point out, you know, about, I want to say about nine months ago, uh, I posted a video where I shared my end time vision that I had uh, received back in, I think around 2002, 2003, somewhere in that, that period of time. Back then I was involved in, in the occult world and I was not a Christian, but I had a basic, basically a night vision, um, of what I, basically of who I am now in my current uh, life as a Christian. And, um, and I really felt a pressing in my spirit around that time, about nine months ago that, that I needed to, uh, come back to that. And I needed to listen to what other people in the body of Christ were saying about these things and, and the season we're about to enter into. And sure enough, here we are, you know, uh, a lot of people realize this is some birth pangs that's going on at the very least. That's what's going on right now in the world is definitely, definitely birth pains. And uh, um, so I felt like there was a clear forewarning. If you want to go back in my YouTube channel and watch that video, um, you know, of course, I didn't give any predictions or anything like that, but I really felt like a pressing on my spirit that we need to be prepared, you know, uh, spirit, soul, and body, and that we need to really understand the times that we're living in. So uh, since then, and uh, after listening to a lot of different people in the body of Christ, you know, I've seen that um, that there has been a lot of prophetic words that have come out in the last year to prepare the body of Christ for this. And I know that a lot of times with prophetic words, people get leery of them because a lot of times they need to incubate until they have the right ingredients, you know, until they have the right season. You know, uh, you, know you, you plant something in the ground. If it's wintertime, it's not going to come uh, and pop up until it has the right amount of sunlight and water and the soil needs to be, you know, to a certain place. So a lot of times with these prophetic words, that's what, that's what we realize that we, we can slumber on them because it's not the right season. Well, now we're starting to see a lot of these prophetic words come into season. And, uh, um, so, you know, one, uh, particular person that, uh, spoke about the whole, um, the outbreak was, uh, Chuck Pierce, you know, he's, he's a prophet, well-known prophet in the body of Christ. And he pretty much predicted, uh, that, um, uh, this would come. He said that, uh, you know, February and March and April, so there's going to be plague-like conditions that are going to uh, uh, test the world. And uh, that's exactly what's going on right now. You know, uh, I got my own word about how I felt like we're entering into a season to time to prepare because something was on the horizon. I didn't quite know what, you know, I, I didn't get a word about any plague or anything like that. But, um, but really, uh, you know, there's other people, Bobby, Bobby Connors, uh, gave words. Uh, there's several people uh, within the body of Christ that have begun to prepare us for what, where we're in right now. And I felt like it's important to understand that uh, the prophetic voices in the body of Christ right now, there is a common theme throughout all of them. And um, these are some of the main things that I'm hearing, okay? For one, uh, now is the time where the where the Lord is he is judging the church. He's bringing the church back into a place of repentance. Uh, judgment begins at the house of God. I feel like that's very clear of what's going on right now in this uh, prophetic season. And uh, I've felt that way since the beginning of the year. There's a lot of things in my life that I've been in a season of repentance for. I've been fasting and praying twice a week. Uh, 
you know, having these, these times where I, I, I set aside for this. And, and so there's, there's a lot that God is, is dealing with me personally. And I know that he's dealing with the, the body of Christ corporately, especially here in America, you know, cause there's a lot of things that got to change if we're going to really embrace, uh, what God has for us, you know, as the bride. So, um, there was several words about, um, you know, I, from the pastor of my church, Joshua Alvarez, he's talking about how the bride of Christ is not ready. And that's why God needs to judge his house right now. And I believe that wholeheartedly. And I believe that that is a consensus amongst the body of Christ right now, that there's a time for repentance. There's a time for um, getting things in the right order within the body of Christ right now. Another big one is, is revival. And I totally, totally uh, see that coming. There is revival coming. I know it sounds crazy to some people because there's a lot of, you know, the opposite going on, but people are opening up to the gospel like never before because things are getting shaken. And that's one of the other big things I keep hearing is, is this is a shaking season. And I would definitely agree with that. Um, here's another thing that I, I feel like is starting to grow as a consensus within the body of Christ. And that is, is that what's going on right now, this event that's going on throughout the whole world right now is not the main event is that there is going to come something bigger after this. This is almost a precursor to something bigger. And this is preparing the body of Christ to, to know how to live through more intense tribulation on a worldwide level. And I really believe that strongly in my spirit, that there is something that's going to come. And obviously we know through the book of Revelation and through other prophetic scriptures that there are definitely bigger things to come. Uh, uh, than what's going on. So I feel like there's a strong, strong consensus um, in this. Another thing, uh, and, and to add on to that, when I first began to uh, really press in, into prayer uh, concerning the whole, you know, outbreak thing, um, I, you know, my heart and my mind was, was focused in prayer on, on the Lord. And then suddenly out of the clear blue, uh, the Lord began to speak to me about the whole virus. Uh, I wasn't even really inquiring him right at that moment. But he said, it will pass. Or he said, this will pass. This will pass on, I think it was the exact words I heard. And so I heard that and I wrote it down. The next day I went and I listened to a video. And at the, uh, it was Trump's uh, press conference. And I heard at the very end of this little YouTube clip of his press conference, he said, this will pass on. And it was almost like the same voice that I heard uh, in my spirit about this, this whole outbreak. So I do believe that this season will pass, uh, and what's going to come out of it, things will be changed. Things will be reorganized, but this is not the end. This is not the end game, uh, situation. I really believe that. And I believe that there's a consensus within the body of Christ that sees that as well. So how long will it be? Uh, hopefully not too much longer because, you know, I run, a, I run a small business. I know a lot of other people that run small businesses are hurting right now. People are closing up shop. And uh, there's some things that are going on that are definitely from the wicked one. And uh, we need to be praying against, you know, unconstitutional type things that are happening. And people shouldn't be rolling over for it, you know. But I'm not going to get too deep into that right now. Um, I, I feel like, you know, that's a whole other subject. So, but I think also... Another consensus thing that's going on in the body of Christ is, it's like Isaiah 60, where it talks about gross darkness upon the people, but the glory of the Lord shall rise upon you. And what I see is, is that right now we're seeing that darkness and that fear really begin to work its way onto people in, in an amplified way, in a ramped up way that's going on right now. But at the same time, the glory of the Lord is arising upon the church like it probably could not have been you know, in, in seasons past. And so uh, I've heard it, it termed a couple different ways. It's almost like there needs, there needs to be more, uh, both sides, light and darkness really need to both amp up so that there could be clarity between the two. And I feel like we're in that season right now. We're in a season where light and darkness are getting amplified so that we can discern more clearly what's going on in this world and, and where we need to navigate through all these things. Another thing I feel like is a, another consensus on the body of Christ that I would agree with is we need to prepare for what's to come down the road. I mean, I've been in a season of preparation uh, for ever since, I think, around 2012. 
is when the Lord began to speak to me, and I talk about this in my, on that video, the end time vision that I had, that he told me that you're entering into the time of, of your vision. And I had this vision in 2002, 2003, but when God really began to reveal to me um, that I was entering into the season of that vision was around 2012. So for the last eight years, I've been in some state of preparation. And one thing he spoke to me is, he goes, many will try to build their house in the middle of a hurricane. And I don't know if you've ever seen anybody try to build a house, like a literal house, in the middle of a hurricane, but they would look pretty foolish. You know, you're out there, you're trying to put up the siding, or you're trying to frame up the house, and it is getting blown all over. And that's what a lot of people are going to end up doing, you know. And, and here's one way to put this in a natural frame. I mean, you go inside the stores, what is everybody buying up right now? Toilet paper and spaghetti and rice and just they're they're freaking out. They're trying to prepare for some kind of major thing right now in the midst of it all. And so they're panic buying and they're they're buying certain things, you know, that uh, they think are going to get them through. But if you've already prepared for what's about to come, you wouldn't have to sit there and stress out about all this right now. And of course, that's a natural thing. But I'm talking more about your spiritual house, you know, uh, how um, like in Proverbs, it talks about, you know, wisdom you know, has laid her foundations, you know, and, and through through understanding, you know, she has established her house and, and she has, uh, um, you know, filled the rooms with knowledge. And so, so uh, what I see right now is, is uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, emotionally, physically, we need to come into a place where we are prepared for what's to come. For me, in the last seven years, I went through intense, intense trials. Uh, a lot of it has exposed a lot of stuff that needed to change within me. I mean, I feel like I've already went through such a fiery season that whatever's going on right now is almost like nothing to me. But I know that there are some things that can come down the road that are going to challenge us uh, dearly. You know, where when it says, you know, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and that they loved not their life even unto death. And that's the type of tribulation that is to come. Is where if you love your life, uh, you will not make it through this because um, there's going to be some things stripped away. And so right now, that's where the Lord wants to prepare us. We're in, we're still in that season, but this current event is even more of a wake up call. <coughs> Excuse me. So another thing I wanted to hit on, and I, I'm trying to make this video as short as possible. Um, cause you know, we got short attention spans, you know, but we're all locked away in our houses right now. So hopefully we can take some time and really, uh, meditate on what the, the Lord is speaking through the body of Christ and what he's speaking through his word. But obviously right now is, is we're in the middle of the feast days. Uh, we just had a Passover. We're in the middle of a, we're not really in the middle. We're, we're coming to a close of the feast of unleavened bread, which began on Passover today is the, really the feast of first fruits, resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. And uh, um, so we, we should be, uh, the body of Christ is unified um, for the first time that I can remember in uh, the feast days, which is incredible. And I don't know why it took a pandemic for that to happen, but suddenly everybody's coming out of the woodwork and they're holding Passover seders and they've been doing this and that. Uh, the church I belong to, we've been practicing the feast for the last 10 years. And uh, this isn't something that's a legal legalistic thing or anything like that, but it's more of these are God's holidays. They're his holidays. So they're his. Uh, the way he put it to me is, is would you ever uh, call it religious to keep your, your anniversary with your wife? Well, absolutely not. It's not a religious thing, but we keep our anniversary every single year. Well, guess what? Passover and uh, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and First Fruits and Pentecost and Feast of Tabernacles and the Day of Atonement, Feast of Trumpets. These are God's holidays. These are anniversaries. These are memorials. These are rehearsals for things to come. And these are memorials for things that God has done. Every major event that has ever happened in this earth, God has done it on a feast day. And it, he said it was written in the stars in Genesis 1. It was, it was the feast days, the, the times, the seasons that God does things were, were already established from the foundation of the world. So we're seeing that right now. We all united on Passover, which is incredible. And something that a lot of people aren't seeing then is, is guess what? When Jesus died on Passover, the disciples then went after he rose from the dead, which is today on, on Feast of First Fruits. He went and he, then he began to teach them. He said, hey, go wait in Jerusalem 
for, for the promise that is to come by the Spirit of God. And so what they did is, is this is something they did every single year. It wasn't like a surprise. They It's called the counting of the Omer. So they, they waited seven sevens or 49 days until the Feast of Shavuot, the Feast of Pentecost. And then the Holy Spirit was poured out. So right now, I feel like we are in a time uh, in the body of Christ where we are unified through Passover, right? And now we're unified, obviously. We've we've always kind of celebrated the, the resurrection through Easter, but, you know, this is the first time we're really looking at the biblical feast together uh, uh, in, in a more of a consensus type of way that I've never seen since I've been a believer. But now I'm telling you, now we're in a time, let's count the Omer. Let's be in expectation. You know, one of the things that I think is, is, is unusual is, is that uh, just like the disciples were kind of tucked away during this time, we're tucked away during this time to the counting of the Omer until the day of Pentecost. And of course, we know that the, the Holy Spirit came with a, a, an outpouring of his spirit and fire, a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And he's going to burn out. He's going to, he's, during this time of waiting and expectation, he's going to burn up the chaff in our life. He's going to, he said his winnowing fan is, is, is blowing. And he's going to start, he's going to start rearranging things and getting us established in a, in a new way. And I tell you what, I, I want to be in expectation. I want to be in expectation on that day all the way until the day had fully come on Pentecost, you know. And, and if you look at the scriptures, it talk about how they were, they were united together. And I feel like right now there's a unity in the body of Christ to unite uh, according to God's timetable, which is the feast days. So I, I just felt like that's a, a really important thing that's going on right now uh, that needs to be spoken of more is let's, let's count the Omer and let's be in an in a, uh, expectation for what God is about to do, you know, and during this whole, and what times of waiting, what I've found is, is that a lot of times God, he unwinds things that need to be unwinded. He uproots things that need to be uprooted. He plants things that needs to be planted in that place of waiting and expectation. And uh, we really need to remain there. We don't have a lot of excuses right now. You know, a lot of us aren't working. A lot of us aren't doing a lot of the normal stuff that we would do that would keep us from that place of waiting. And so I feel like he's going to deal with a lot of stuff in us. I know he's dealing with me. I know he is. And, 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 and I want to let the fire of God burn up the things that need to be burnt up. And so, and I, and I, and I just pray that for you as well. I pray that you would enter in to the timetable of God right now and that you would press into what God has for you in this season and understand the times that we're in. Which is the next thing I wanted to talk about is the Lord began to speak to me about the sons of Issachar. And um, um, you can go find that. I think it's in, uh, what is it, First uh, Chronicles uh, uh, 12, I believe. Um, but anyways, uh, um, he I feel like there's a sons of Issachar anointing that's going on right now uh, on the body of Christ. In that, and I looked up the word right before I uh, started making this video. Issachar literally, literally means he will bring a reward. And I, I, I find that amazing because right now the Lord is saying those who diligently, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And I feel like this is a time of seeking, of prayer, of fasting, um, to really come after the Lord and to be like a, a son of Issachar and to understand the times that we're living in right now. This is another thing I, I heard personally, and I feel like is for the body of Christ is the other day I was praying and I heard the word opportunity that that like see right now my business is shut down I'm I'm like not making any money at all I had to lay off you know my my employee I mean things are looking bad in the natural but the Lord is saying this is an opportunity right now right now is a time for for the wealth that God has set apart for the children of God that has been uh, kept up in the world to be transferred to the body of Christ. and But it's going to be given to those that are just like when the children of Israel came under the blood of the Lamb and, and during Passover, and then as they begin to leave and leave Egypt, that the Egyptians threw their money at them, threw all their gold and everything, and said, get out of our land. <laughs> and, uh, and I believe that right now is a time where many in the body of Christ can come up in this season. They can come up financially. And I feel like there's not just 
financial opportunities, but there's opportunities to uh, enter into maybe uh, fields of work and uh, other types of, of things, you know, maybe like creative ideas you've had stored up uh, to really begin to act on them by faith. And I know that maybe like it sounds crazy because this it seems like this is not the time to do that. But I, I feel like the Lord spoke to me clearly. He said that the horn of plenty is over the body of Christ. I watch a vision uh, that Perry Stone had in, in where he saw a coming civil unrest, which which may happen. I, I you know I don't know. I I hope it doesn't, but it very well may happen. But he saw a horn of plenty, which is like those horns that hold all the fruits and and everything inside of it, and it's it's a sign of abundance and of plenty. And he said he saw that over the body of Christ, and um and I feel and I, that bore witness to me because I I actually put up a horn of plenty in my house at the beginning of the year. And I saw it inside of our garage when we were unpacking. And I, and I felt like from the Spirit of God to put that in our living room. And I, I don't even know what a horn of plenty was, to be honest with you. So after I watched that Perry Stone video, it all began to register. This is what he's talking about. There is a horn of plenty over the body of Christ. That Not only is there going to be provision, but there's going to be an abundance. There's going to be an overflow. There's going to be a transfer from the wealth of this world into the body of Christ. But I, I believe, though, it's for the givers. If, if you... This is another thing. You can't just all of a sudden now learn how to give right now, okay? Now, maybe, you know, God will bless you in this time, uh, you know, whatever. I, I have no idea for each individual person. But if you've developed a culture of giving in your life, I see a great financial harvest coming right now. It's not just a harvest of souls, which I totally believe is, is coming, but it's a harvest uh, uh, fi financially. And, um, I really, really believe that. And I, I heard the word opportunity. This is an opportunity. The enemy's trying to take opportunity for sure. You know, I see small businesses that are shutting down and, you know, multinational corporations ain't shutting down. Right. So obviously the enemy and the world system is trying to seize upon this, but see, God is, he's bigger than all that, you know, and a lot of people get caught up in that. They see what the enemy is doing. I see it. A lot of this stuff is unconstitutional, what's going on in our country right now. A lot of this stuff has been pre-planned, okay? And I totally believe that. And I believe what they're doing is 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 a total uh, fear-based control and manipulation, I mean, about this whole outbreak, you know? The more you look into it, okay? Um, but at the same time, you always got to, you, know, you have to understand that God knew all this was coming. And he has a, an incredible way of just flipping the agenda of the enemy upside down where it turns into God's people's favor. And that's what I see right now. Right now, my business is shut down. Financially, we are in turmoil. But I, I, I have such a grace and a feeling from the Holy Spirit that right now is going to be the most prosperous time of our life, um, you know, or at least up to this point of my life. And so, because I have sown into the kingdom, I have give given of time and money and all, all sorts of different things. So I just, I really want to emphasize that right now, that this is this is an, an important thing that we need to understand. Something I'm going to get into in a different video labor is about the laboring uh, into rest. Uh, the Lord really began to speak to me about what it talks about in Hebrews chapter 4, about we must labor into rest. And what is it to labor into rest? Um you know, this is something that sounds almost, you know, like an oxymoron. And uh, just to, uh, I'm going to elaborate on it more in a different video. But but simply put is this. The time that we're in to diligently seek after him. To be disciplined in our time with him. Our prayer life. Our studying the word. Maybe it's prayer and fasting. A lot of the times these can these things can feel laborsome. And the reason why it feels laborsome is because we have not entered into rest yet. But I assure you that, and I have experienced this in my life, and I am looking forward to another dimension of rest where you even get back to some of the rest I previously had in my life. That as I stay in the, the diligence and the discipline of the Lord, that rest will come. A supernatural Sabbath rest will come over my life. And so, so, so that was the key just in a nutshell. And I'm going to get way more in, in detail in a different video on this because it is very powerful actually. Um, but if you are, if you are praying and fasting or reading the word and, and you're pressing in and it feels laborsome, it's because you haven't entered into the rest. Now, if things are just easy, 
you're just in his presence, uh, reading the word, um, you know, all these things are just coming so freely and there's such a grace and a peace uh, on your life. Well, guess what? You probably have entered into a dimension of that Sabbath rest that was uh, prepared for us from the foundation of the world. And m maybe some of us in part are in that rest, but then there's other areas where God is working on us. So I encourage you today to remain in the discipline of God, whatever it is that he has pressed on you. You know, for me, it was prayer and fasting twice a week. You know, even with a busy work schedule. For some, it may be you need to read the word every single day. I mean, whatever it may be. Some some of these things may seem laborsome. They may seem like, oh, you know, I'm like, I'm striving or something like that. Well, that's what a labor is. Labor is striving. It is work, okay? But there's going to come a point when you have moved from that into his his rest. And it will no longer feel like work. There will no longer be such a striving or a labor. But uh, but something that has been missed in the body of Christ lately is, is that the laboring is important, okay? There's a lot of emphasis on we can't be in a, a in, in the flesh and working and, and like a works mentality. And I believe all that and I, I understand all that. You know, we can't like earn our salvation. We can't make ourselves right with God. You know, those things are very foundational, but very often to bring our souls into that place, to bring our minds, our emotions, our will into that place, we have to labor into that rest. Here's an example of how it, this could be, uh, we, we see it in the life of Jesus. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was laboring in prayer. And, and he kept on saying, this is before he went to the cross, he kept on saying, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done, Lord. See, there was a labor and he finally entered into that rest is when he gave up the ghost. But he had to labor. There was a time right there where he labored. I, I often believe that that uh, um, there was other times in his life when he, because he says he was accustomed to going to the Garden of Gethsemane in prayer, that during those times was, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning. It was laborsome, uh, but it would bring him into a place of rest so that the miracles and the joy and the shalom could flow from his life. So there's so much more to all this that I can't get into in this video because it's like a whole other 30 minute video. I just wanted to make this one, you know, as short as possible. So in closing, I really feel like there's one other thing that God is pressing for us in this, in this uh, season is that the church must embrace family. Okay, um, we need to learn to support families, but we also need to understand there need, there's going to be new revelation coming on what does a spiritual family really look like. It's something that's lost in the American church right now, but God, it, it, he wants it. I, 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 I can feel the, 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 uh, the burden uh, uh, from heaven on this about families. And I believe one of the reasons why, and, and, and this came to me when I was listening to Bob uh, Bob Jones's wife, uh, she recently gave a, a word on YouTube and uh, she talked about how she believed that the billion soul harvest that her husband prophesied about, she believes that the majority of those people are going to be people coming out of human trafficking, young children and, and young adults coming out of, you know, the, the human trafficking uh, industry. They're going to get saved and it's going to be in the multitudes, hundreds of millions of them. And, and I believe that it really resonated in my spirit that during this time, because of the things that are going on in the world, that God's rearranging things to free these people up. Plus, the church has been praying for this for quite a while. And so I think it's very important that the church is ready to bring in, in a harvest. Guess what? A people, think about it, These are people that have been trafficked their whole lives. Okay? They need to experience the love of a father. They need to experience you know, the love of, of a real family. And the church is not going to just suddenly one morning all of a sudden wake up and know how to be a family. This starts every single day where all of us begin to get over ourselves and to begin to really seek the Lord intentionally on what does the church family really look like? How can we support actual young families? Like my family, we got, we, we're about to have our fifth child. Okay. Um, you know, back in the day, it, it says it takes a, a village to raise a child, right? Well, not nowadays. There ain't no village support for anything. Uh, uh, you know, back then, five children were probably considered very little. People were having, you know, 15, 20, 25 kids, you know. 
because there was a different mentality towards family and towards children. Now they're seen more as a burden almost uh, that I see, and especially in the church. And so um, I think our whole mentality has to shift on this, me included. You know, I did not fully understand uh, how important this is to God until I got married and started to have children. Um, before I got married, I was praying one day for revival. And, you know, and I had these visions of revival that it was going to be like Azusa Street and the Welsh revival. And, and a lot of it very well may be like that. But then all of a sudden he spoke to me, God, and was like, revival will begin with families here in America. And I had no understanding of what God just told me. At that time, I was single, had never been married, never had children. I had no idea what he was saying. Then when I got married and I had children, I really began to understand what he's saying about how revival in America will begin with families. And I think the human trafficking, uh, uh, ch uh, children coming out of human trafficking and the harvest of that and some of these other things that are coming to pass that are transpiring right now, we really need to be in a, se a season of preparation as a church to not, not only unite through the feast days and, um, you know, unite through the word of God and be diligent and disciplined in this hour and repentance and, until we come into that supernatural rust, until until we come in, into a place where it's effortless, you know, to in our relationship with God, but also be intentional uh, about what does it look like for the church to begin to, to uh, develop and nurture strong families, okay? Um, so... So I'm going to end it with that. I hope this encourages you. I hope this brings in maybe, uh, you know, it says that we know in part and we prophesy in part. I hope this brings in a greater kind of like, let's let's take a look back at what the body of Christ is saying, you know, from, from a whole panoramic view. And let's see, you know, uh, if there is a consensus. And, I, and so I wanted to bring all that in. I'm not... I'm not going to leave a bunch of links to all these different videos, you know, because uh, there's a lot of them I've listened to. And, and uh, but the most important thing right now is definitely get alone because uh, each one of us have our own uh, specific instructions on how to navigate this season. So, um, but also uh, realize that, that we're all coming together. We're, there is a consensus. The Holy Spirit is speaking loud and clear. Okay. He doesn't just speak fringe things from what, you know, here and there. It's 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 ringing out loud and clear. So I, I hope this can bring some clarity to that. So God bless you. Have a, an amazing uh, quarantining time if that's what you're doing, and uh, and and be an expectation for an amazing outpouring of the Spirit of God on the Feast of Pentecost. And I will uh, be talking to you soon. God bless you.